Namaskaram everyone. In this video, I shall be talking about Association of Child Neurology Guidelines on Febrile Seizures, Diagnosis and Management, published this in this very issue of the Indian Pediatrics. And these guidelines have been formulated this year itself. So these are the latest. So just brushing up the definitions, febrile seizure as we know is a seizure with fever with temperature more than 38.4 degrees centigrade or more than 101 degree Fahrenheit. It is not because of any kind of CNS pathology and the usual age group of it is which it affects is 6 months to 6 years of age. A simple febrile seizure is without a focal component that is it is a generalized seizure lasting for less than 15 minutes and it does not recur within 24 hours usually. Complex febrile seizures are focal and or more than 15 minutes and or they recur within 24 hours. Febrile status epilepticus is a febrile seizure lasting for more than equal to 30 minutes. And febrile seizure plus is a febrile seizure that continues past the usual age up to which the seizures are expected to resolve that is 6 years as we have seen in the previous scene and or they are accompanied by afebrile seizures. These afebrile seizures can be generalized or can be focal. The generalized seizures can be of any type like tonic, clonic, atonic, myoclonic or absence. So febrile seizure plus, the plus term here means either there is increase in the duration or there is an increase in the spectrum of seizures that is febrile seizures are accompanied with afebrile seizures. Then there is a term known as Je Jeff's plus that is genetic epilepsy with febrile seizure plus. It is a type of febrile seizure plus that is the one which we have seen just now along with a positive family history. This positive family history can be of febrile seizures, febrile seizure plus or afebrile seizures. Now talking about the blood investigations. Complete blood count with C-reactive protein need not be done in all patients. It may be considered in children with complex febrile seizures or those having febrile status epilepticus. Routine blood sugar, serum electrolytes like sodium and serum calcium testing is also not to be done routinely. It may be considered in patients who are brought convulsing to the emergency room including those with febrile status epilepticus and in patients with complex febrile seizures. So the indications are almost the same as for CBC with CRP. Remember none of these investigations is required in a child with simple febrile seizures except for serum calcium sometimes which may be done in children less than one year of age because they are usually deficient in calcium. Serum iron can be done in children with clinical pallor. Serum phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase and 25 hydroxy vitamin D need to be done in patients with associated rickets or hypocalcemia. Regards neuroimaging, it is required in patients with first episode of complex febrile seizures if only if the complex febrile seizure is prolonged or has focal features. Otherwise, all patients with complex febrile seizures also do not need a neuroimaging at the first go itself. Neuroimaging is not required in patients with simple febrile seizures or as a routine follow-up in those whose initial neuroimaging was negative. Even if the patient has had com prolonged complex febrile seizures. EEG is to be done in patients with complex febrile seizures and children with focal findings on neuroimaging and is not required in simple febrile seizures. The type of neuroimaging which is preferred is an MRI brain which is to be done within 72 hours or a CT scan head if MRI brain is not available. And an EEG should be done within one week of febrile seizure or at the earliest feasibility, including at least a 30 minute record having both, both the sleep and the awake state recorded. Now, we used to study the indications of lumbar puncture in febrile seizure if the child was having an age less than one year of age. But now the AOCN recommends lumbar puncture to be done in five clinical scenarios. First is any child less than 12 months of age with the first episode of febrile seizure, especially if he has not received immunization against streptococcus pneumonia and haemophilus influenzae type B, or any child more than 12 months of age who has been pre-treated with antibiotics, or any child in any age group with clinical signs of meningitis, 
or all children with febrile status epilepticus as the initial presentation of febrile seizure and in a sedated child who continues to be obtunded after sufficient time has lapsed. But lumbar puncture is not required in children 12 to 18 months of age even if they have received a full course of Haemophilus influenzae B and pneumococcal vaccine but there are no clinical features of meningitis and in all patients with complex febrile seizures and children brought sedated to the emergency services. What you must remember that lumbar puncture should preferably be preceded by neuroimaging in children especially with focal neurological deficits, clinical symptoms and signs of raised intracranial pressure. This is a routine thing we all know and CSF viral or bacterial panel is not indicated routinely but only if the routine CSF analysis is indicative of meningitis. Genetic testing for Dravet syndrome may be considered in patients with having recurrent febrile status epilepticus with onset of prolonged hemiconvulsive seizures below the age of one year. But remember the decision to order this investigation that is screening for SCN1A gene which is the gene implicated in Dravet syndrome must be done in consultation with a pediatric neurologist or geneticist. Now parents of children having febrile seizure should be taught about the recovery position, the dose and route of abortive medication that is the medicine which is to be administered in stat at the time of seizure activity, when to administer a repeat dose and when to bring the child to the hospital. The abortive medicine should be given preferably 3 to 5 minutes after seizure activity in a non-hospital setting. The drug of choice is intranasal midazolam given at the rate of 0.2 mg per kg. It is preferred over ectal diazepam or buccal lorazepam because of cumbersome in administering via these two routes of administration. And it can be repeated after 5 minutes in case of prolonged seizures. Intermittent prophylaxis, now coming on to the management, the intermittent prophylaxis is recommended in frequent, recurrent, simple febrile seizures. But if the parents have a lot of anxiety and they are residing far away from the medical facilities, otherwise not. And in patients with complex febrile seizures who have not been started on continuous prophylaxis. Intermittent prophylaxis is not recommended in patients with first episode of simple febrile seizure. You must remember the dose, the drug of choice for intermittent prophylaxis is Globazam in a dose of 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per day, BID for 3 days and maximum being 20 mg per day and stopped after 3 days without tapering. The parents should initiate this drug if the child develops fever more than 38 degrees centigrade or when they administer antipyretic medication. Continuous prophylaxis. It is, recommend, it is to be considered in children with febrile status epilepticus, children with neurodevelopmental delay having febrile seizures, frequent complex febrile seizures and children with febrile seizures plus or genetic epilepsy with febrile seizures plus but having afebrile seizures. Continuous prophylaxis is not recommended for simple febrile seizures and you know the drug of choice is sodium valproate. Baseline LFT not being required in healthy children otherwise. And once initiated, this drug should be continued for a minimum of 2 year seizure free period. And management of febrile status epilepticus is similar to that of con routine convulsive status epilepticus. And sodium channel blocking anti-epileptic drugs, lattice phenytoin should not be used in children with febrile status epilepticus who are already diagnosed with Dravet syndrome, febrile seizure plus or genetic epilepsy with febrile seizure plus because these syndromes, they have generally have mutation in the sodium channels. Also, antipyretic medication that is paracetamol can be given in a dose of 15 mg per kg per dose 6 hourly during the period of fever. It is not meant for preventing or preventing the occurrence or the recurrence of a febrile seizure but it does make the child comfortable and the parents less anxious and micronutrient supplementation is not recommended routinely even though iron, zinc, vitamin D otherwise might be given but they have no role in preventing a febrile seizure. Here I would like to add one important concept the fact that in febrile seizures, it is the level of interleukin-6 which is responsible for precipitating febrile seizure and it is not the degree or the intensity of fever 
which will decide whether or not the child can have fever and the child can have seizure during the febrile episode parents should be counseled regarding the overall benign nature of febrile seizures the good prognosis for future neurodevelopmental outcome and a low likelihood of developing epilepsy they should be told why febrile seizures occur and the fact that it does not constitute epilepsy the risk of death during the seizure is negligible simple febrile seizures do not lead to epilepsy or intellectual impairment almost ever and the risk of febrile seizure recurrence which is around 50% if the first febrile seizure occurred in less than 1 year age group and 30% otherwise this is not been included in the aocn guidelines and i found it from some other reliable sources and i have been mentioning over here what is to be done if the child has fever obviously he has to be administered antipyretics the dose and duration you have to mention frequency and what needs to be done if the child has a seizure so the parents must be taught about the basic first aid keeping the child in recovery position giving the rescue medication they should be explained the danger signs and the time when the child should be brought to the medical facility so summarizing the entire guidelines which is very important because it's quite confusing at places the blood investigations including complete blood count random blood sugar serum electrolytes and calcium need to be done in complex febrile seizures and not as a routine neuroimaging is to be done in first episode of complex febrile seizures if it is prolonged or has focal features and the imaging to be preferred is mri brain eeg needs to be done in complex febrile seizures and in children with focal findings on neuroimaging and should be done preferably within one week of febrile seizure or at the earliest feasibility lumbar puncture needs to be done in children less than 1 12 months of age with first episode of febrile seizure more than 12 months of age having been pretreated with antibiotics any age group with signs of meningitis children with febrile status epilepticus as the first presentation of febrile seizure and sedated child who continues to be attended after sufficient time has lapsed domiciliary care should be taught to the parents of children with febrile seizure and should include the dose and the method of administration of intranasal midazolam which is the drug of choice in a dose of 0.2 mg per kg intermittent prophylaxis is recommended in children with frequent recurrent simple febrile seizures with parental anxiety and residence far from medical facilities and those with complex febrile seizures not having been initiated on to continuous prophylaxis due to any reason and the drug of choice for intermittent prophylaxis is clobazam continuous prophylaxis is something new which the aocn has added and every resident and every pediatrician must know about this it should be considered in children with febrile status epilepticus febrile seizures in children with neurodevelopmental delay frequent complex febrile seizures in children with febrile seizure plus and genetic epilepsy with febrile seizure plus with afebrile seizures and the drug of choice is valproate and paracetamol sexarly needs to be given for the duration of the febrile episode it is basically for making the child comfortable so these are the four drugs you need to remember domiciliary care with intranasal midazolam intermittent prophylaxis with clobazam and continuous prophylaxis with valproate and paracetamol during the febrile period episode febrile episode period thank you so much for a patient watching and please do share the knowledge thanks a lot